Hi there everybody, it's your favorite online entomologist again, Bart Coppens, and here I am holding a tube with eggs of a moth from the Far East, from Russia. It is called the Dolbina tankrai, which is a species of hawk moth, aka Sphingidae, which has two generations per year and is found in Japan, in Korea, in Russia and, uh, well, basically the entire Far East Asia. And uh, we are going to show you in captivity how I will rear them until adults in detail. Dolbida tankai is um, a hog moth that feeds on Olacea, uh, Olacea plants, uh, and that includes the olive family, but their actual natural host plants are uh, common privet, aka ligustrum, and fraxinus, which is ash tree. Well, I received this tube of eggs from Russia, it's hard to see. But all will become uh, clear in time. Now these eggs will probably hatch in a few days. And let's see how they will grow from uh, tiny eggs to adult moths. This is the start of the moth cycle, a new video project of mine. Phase 1. Incubating the eggs. Also the most convenient and easy phase. So here I have a tube with 30 eggs of the hog moth Dolbina tankai. Hog moth edge eggs are known to hatch very soon, so this will not take a lot of effort. Here we have a nice convenient plastic container, so what I do is I open this tube which I receive the eggs in. Now some of you will be asking where did you get them from and my answer is I will not be uh, responding to that in this video, I have other videos for that. This is just about incubating the eggs. Some of you will ask me, Bart, what uh, kind of plastic container I sh should I use? And my answer to that is literally any kind of plastic container that has no holes or anything uh, in it that would allow them to escape. No, don't make ventilation holes, they don't need that, it's a myth. They don't need holes in the container to breathe, it's nonsense. So what I'm gonna do is, of course, I'm gonna place the eggs in here. And let's see, are they all of them out? Ah, there's some left in the tube. That's it. Well, this barely took one single day, but the first caterpillar already hatched the same night after putting the eggs in this container. So in regards to hatching them, I guess this video was timed just right. Although I really didn't have to make much of an effort to, uh, to hatch them because, well, they were already hatching as we speak. In fact, if, if the tube of eggs arrived one day later, they would have died in a post. Because they hatched in there without any kind of food. Now here I have a rearing container. It contains some uh, paper towels, which absorbs excess humidity. And some of its food plant, which is uh, ligustrum. So I'm gonna transfer the first hatchling. I'm gonna manipulate it very carefully with a stick. Because these larvae are very sensitive, especially when they're so small, it's very easy to squish them by accident. Just gonna put it in there, there we go. One larva on a stick and I'm gonna place it on its food plant. There we go. First larva of Dolbina tankai should be ready to feed this night or tomorrow, it will probably take one day for it to settle down. It's the same night, it's the same thing, but more have hatched. So I'm gonna repeat, repeat the process once again. I'm not going to show you how I'm going to transfer each and single, every one of these larvae. But just so you get the point, more of them have hatched. Come here on the stick, little one. Oops, it dropped itself. Come here. Come here, little one. Yes, there we go. And there you go. Let's see, here's another one. Yes. There you go. I wonder where the first larva is. It should be in here somewhere too. 
It will probably settle on the leaves in about 24 hours. Straight away after hatching, most caterpillars aren't hungry because they consume a part of their own eggshells. So basically they're born with a full stomach. And sometimes it takes 24 hours or longer for them to start eating. This is gonna be a messy part of the video because I'm filming these tiny, tiny little things. It's really hard to get any image of them, to be honest. There we go. Three larvae up there. Looks good so far. Right? These really small things here, they're gonna grow into big, healthy, adult hop moths of the Dolbina Tankrai. Come here, come here. Yes. Oh. Another one here, next to his empty egg. Trying to escape from my stick. There you go. There you go, little one. Ah. This can be tedious. Come here. There we go. Nope. Dropped itself again. Mm, this one's annoying, guys. There we go. <clears throat> Took his empty eggshell with him. As you can see. That's okay. So some of them are ro roaming the paper towel. Others are just sitting here on the food plant. F feeding will start tomorrow. Probably. Here's one more of them, just hatched. Oops. <clears throat> there we go. It's even next to an unhatched egg, but it's all right. Come here. I'm gonna try and separate it. possible to separate them hmm come here Well, I'm gonna put it on here together with one unhatched egg. Because who cares? This egg is gonna hatch anyways, it may as well just hatch here. <clears throat> so, this is the start of it all. For now. I'm not gonna film each and every larva, but um, you get the idea of the first stage. So, now we wait 24 hours. And if I'm right, they should start eating tomorrow, if we check back. Hi there everybody! It has been about six days since the eggs of the Dolbina Tancray hatched. And since then I've basically left them alone and undisturbed here in this container with some fresh food plants. So today we are going to check up on them to see how they are doing and if we've made any progress. Here's a good sign. There are massive chewing bites in the leaves and as you can see the larvae have grown significantly. In fact they already seem to be in the second instar which is instar number two out of five. They've eaten a lot, they've grown a lot. This is exactly what I wanted to see. However, they've been in here for like five or six days, which is a long time not to clean them. So 
We are going to add some fresh food plants and some fresh uh, cotton. Well, I should say paper towels. I prefer to keep them uh, in this towel in the first instars. So, what we are going to do is well, basically, I'm going to put a new sheet of uh, paper towel in their container, which will keep it clean. Here we go. All very very simple so far. Here I have some new food plants, uh, some ligustrum. It's a greater quantity than this, but they start to eat more since they're in the second instant. I don't want to, them to run out of food. So let me just place the new twig of food in here. All very straightforward and easy. Now uh, the caterpillars. There's one mistake that many people make. And that is handling young caterpillars with their hands. It's not something I'm a fan of because these are really fragile creatures and even touching them with your finger can cause them internal injuries because it's easy to crush them. So what I prefer to do, I like to take the leaf that they are sitting on and what I do is I cut it. So here you can see we have one caterpillar on a leaf. This is difficult to film and do at the same time. Of course, you must try not to cut into the caterpillar. And here we go. And this is the best way of picking them up. Sitting on its old leaf. And this does not cause them any stress or injury. Because pulling caterpillars off the leaf can be harmful for them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place the new leaf in here. Now, what it's going to do, it's probably going to... Uh, to eat its old leaf for a day uh, until it discovers it has new and fresher food so it will prefer that instead and it will uh, most of most species will automatically move to the best quality freshest leaves not all of them but most of them will and I certainly think this species will so I'm going to take all the leaves with the small caterpillars on them like these And I'm going to move them in here. They have fresh food, they have clean container. So time for them to move on. And I'm going to do this until I've replaced all the caterpillars from this place to this place. There we go. Now I have to say there are some species that are very stupid and will remain feeding on their old leaf because they can tell the difference between fresh and old leaf. Now these are the species that you must force of their uh, old food plants. One example is Automeris. If you've ever bred Automeris you will notice that uh, yeah, some of them are so stupid they will keep feeding on their old food for a long time. So you have to coax them into eating uh, new food. Now I'm not going to film me uh, picking up all these individual caterpillars, so let's skip forward. Alright, so we are six days in. I placed all the caterpillars here in with their food plants. They are now uh, second instar. All within one week, feeding well, no mortality yet. So I guess uh, I have cleaned their container, I've given them new food, there's not much else that I can do at this point. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to close the box. And that was it for now, I'm going to leave them alone for about 3 to 4 days and we will check back. So once again it's been a few days since I last cleaned these. Uh, how many days ago you ask? Well it's like 2 or three or maybe four I don't know I lost count yeah I'm sure I'm uh, sloppy like that but who cares it's not about counting days right sometimes you just gotta trust your gut feeling let's see how they are doing ah this is great this is some clear very clear progress And for the first time, 
caterpillars are noticeably, noticeably much bigger. I don't know exactly how many there are in here. You notice I started the video with 30 eggs, but uh, there are definitely less than 30. And uh, why you ask? Well, it's not because some caterpillars died. Actually, all of them are still alive, but it's just that not 100% of my eggs hatched. Only like half of the eggs has hatched, so I guess that makes like 15 caterpillars instead of the promised 30. Is that a problem? No, it's really not a problem. It's normal. It's normal if you breed moths that not all your eggs will hatch. It's uh, actually exceptional that it happens. So what I'm gonna do now the caterpillars have grown bigger and uh, they've become a little bit, you know, overpopulated in the small container. Why? Well, because caterpillars, they like space. And it's easy to overcrowd them if they're starting to become bigger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate them into two different containers. Like, I'm going to put half of them in the right one and the other half of them in the left one. So, because if your caterpillars are dying a lot and you wonder what you're doing wrong, you're probably putting too many in the same container because they are sensitive to that. Too many in the same container will cause diseases um, and bacterial growth. Actually, in the wild, caterpillars, unless they are social species, they often live in low densities. That means over a certain surface area, not many of them uh, can be found, not many individuals, at least not as close together, uh, confined in a small space like they are in captivity. So we're gonna give them some room. It's better to give them too much than uh, too little space, to be honest. <clears throat> this is gonna be awkward, because I'm ha gonna have to film and put the caterpillars in there at the same time. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pick off the leaf like this. Beautiful, beautiful. Starting to like this progress. I'm gonna look forward to seeing the moths. So I'm gonna divide them one by one. So this makes one, two, see how many more we got we already have two but I bet there are more than just two caterpillars this is difficult because they're camouflaged quite well three ah here we have number four and five four see where was number five there you are on the stick yeah this is gonna be annoying because I'm doing all of this with one hand so it's uh, kind of clumsy and stupid looking but hey come on number five Come with me. Where are you? He's in here somewhere. Oh, there he is. Isn't he? Oh. Well. Five. Really? I only have five caterpillars left from 30 eggs. Hmm. It's not a great success. Oh, wait, there's no number six. Caterpillar number six. It's less than I would have hoped to see, but this is really out of my, uh, beyond my own control, so to speak. I mean, these birth rates are pretty random. Ah, looks like I found caterpillar number seven. They're so well camouflaged. I mean, this one goes there. 
but it's so well camouflaged it's easy to miss one and wow what do we have here strange here I found a really small caterpillar as you can see it's much smaller than the rest of them it's not even in the second instar yet like its brothers you see hmm this is what we call a runt. A runt is a caterpillar that uh, has uh, some, uh, somehow a, an impaired growth speed, maybe a reduced metabolic speed. And in the wild these runs don't make it. Usually they die. Although some species have runs on purpose because uh, having a reduced metabolism also has ad evolutionary advantages, especially if there's food shortage. Then you don't need as, as much food and then uh, you can grow slowly and sparingly. But in this case it's a runt and the question is, is will this small one survive? Probably not. It's not looking good. But um, there we go, it's number 8. So we have 8 caterpillars. That's uh, still more than I thought. I was complaining about 5, so I can live with 8. But uh gonna make sure we have all of them. I mean, they're so extremely well hidden. It's always a shame to show, throw away caterpillars. Nah, it's it's okay. It's cool. We got them all. So eight caterpillars is the current status. Um, I would have hoped to have more, but it's enough to finish this video. I mean, I only need one male and one female, and then it, they will produce like one hundred maybe even more eggs so yeah I only need one pair to make up for all of the effort there we go little one let's grow into a nice and beautiful moth Well, uh, time to put the lid on and time to forget about them, literally and figuratively, for a few days and leave them undisturbed to eat to their heart's content. Dobina Tankrai, only Gastrum, uh, it's like week two or something, I'll put a... An, when the video is finished, I'll put like an official count of the number of days uh, in the video. But for now, it's like like two weeks, maybe less, like one and a half week. It's a good progress. So let's continue. Well, there we are again. It has been like uh, I think four days ago since the previous clip. Maybe five. I don't know. And it's time to check up on our progress and clean them again for the last time in these plastic containers. Why for the last time you ask? Well, I'm gonna explain that later. First, let's see our progress. Oh, look at that. Immediately after opening the container, I am greeted with a nice and big larva. And this is the first point in the video, I think, where the progress is really, really uh, easy to see. Because so far I've been playing with these tiny larvae, but now we can finally see their growth. And it's paying off, as you can see. They are in the third instar. And soon they will outgrow plastic containers completely. Now this is the last time I'm going to change their food in these containers because after this they will go into the cage. Why you ask? Well I will explain that later because I'm going to explain that the moment I'm going to place them in the cage actually. Um, from the, In the last clip you saw how I divided this breeding group into two containers instead of one and it has paid off. I mean big caterpillars need big space it's as simple as that 
And well, <clears throat> here they got new food. Once again, let's take the dirty, dirty paper towel here and remove some of the caterpillars. There we go. Beautiful Dolbina Tanke. Nice and green. So, I'm not sure about how I should pick him up, perhaps. I think I can take him gently off the stick. This has to be done carefully. There we go. I don't like handling caterpillars that often, but for the sake of this video. There we go, it's number one. Not sure how many we had in this container, but it's easier to find them now. It's number two here. What I'm gonna do is I'm just going to One moment, this is, well, I'm, I'm going to put him in here, including this small stick he's sitting on, because I don't like manually removing all these caterpillars, so. The, there we have number two. Let's see how many we got here. Ah, here we have number three. I'm not sure how many caterpillars there were in this container, but there should be four of them, I think. But I'm not exactly sure if I put four caterpillars in each container or five in one and uh, three in the second one. Because there are eight in total, but I don't know how I divided them exactly. So this is number three. Going to grow into big and beautiful moths soon. Let's take a look. Now, there is the question if... Is there still a hidden caterpillar here? Or did I not, non, did not perfectly divide them? So for that I think we'll just have to take a look in the second container. Let's take all the dirty stuff out. There we go. There's still some of this stuff in here. Dip, I put it there. See? All clean. It's easy to keep this clean. Now. I'm going to add some new paper, some fresh food. It all looks a little bit clumsy because I'm filming this with one hand at the same time. But uh, I should stop saying that because I like to emphasize that a lot in these videos. I guess it just annoys me the way it looks on camera. But let's see what we have here. Well, let's take this guy off. He's sitting on the leaf, so I'll just pick off the leaf that he's sitting on like this. And add it to the container. Whoop, there we go. So that should be number four. And I see that here we have number five. Caterpillar number five, nice and healthy. Come here. There you go, number five. So, we had eight in total, so in theory, there should be two more. Ah, there we go. Damn. So, let's see, now we have one, two, three caterpillars here. And we have, I believe, three caterpillars here, so six in total. Mm -hmm. This is the difficult part. Oh, there we go. I can tell that one caterpillar has perished. See this? This is the carcass of a dead larva. Uh, why has it died? Well, did you remember the last clip where I showed you the small caterpillar? And the moment that I called it a runt? This is the small one. And I told you the small ones usually die. And it's exactly what happened. So this is what I expected to see. I guess we don't have to look for that one anymore. 
one has died obviously so there should be one caterpillar left in theory hmm Okay guys, this really sucks. I promise to show you every step along the way of breeding this species, but I just made this very elaborate video of where I showed you my progress and I uh, accidentally deleted it. So I'm going to, I'm refilming it right now, but uh, it's not showing you um, exactly what I did on camera but I will explain it well these caterpillars are becoming too big to be kept in plastic boxes because like I said at the start of this video big caterpillars need airflow and ventilation and uh, they they really want to have space space that's the key word here so what I did I took a bottle filled with water I took a branch of host plant and I stuck it in there and here we have some paper that's preventing the caterpillars from crawling into the bottle and drowning them. And the water in this bottle it is absorbed by the plant and it will stay fresh for quite some time. I'm a little bit upset because well that small that small video that I accidentally deleted I can't film it again because it was the video where I took the caterpillars out of their boxes and placed them here on this food plant so it's uh, kind of upsetting but I hope not too much is lost because we're still having progress the caterpillars are now three and a half weeks old let's keep that in mind three and a half weeks they are n not, not even a month old yet but um, progress is visible, they're starting to get quite bigger I think this is the fourth out of uh, five instars so after this they will shed their skins again and um, that's when they will hit the final stage before pupating uh, I believe I still have like six or seven caterpillars in here, I mean in theory I should have but is it just me or are they difficult to find? I don't know. I filmed two. Oh wait, yeah, they are difficult to find. Look at that. Look at that camouflage. It's here. They are completely hidden inside the vegetation here. As you can see. Well, guess what? That was the the next update on the Dolbin at Tanka. Thanks for watching. Yeah, uh, well, keep watching because we're gonna see these turn into moths pretty soon alright everybody it's currently two o'clock in the middle of the night so I have to be really quiet because there are people sleeping in the house and I'm awake as I was about to change the food plant for my Dolbina Tankrai caterpillars until I noticed something let's check it out I have the cage, the open cage with food plant. Here we see caterpillar. However, do you see this? This is called a pre-pupa. This is the behavior that, behavior that caterpillars show when they want to pupate, especially if they are hawk moth larva. They will become restless and they will wander around endlessly and why they are doing this is because they are looking for a place to burrow that's right, they pupate literally underground and when they are underground they will form sort of a subterranean chamber which they use to pupate so it means that basically the caterpillars are ready to turn into moths and that means that we have succeeded at raising them. Sorry for having to whisper here. I mean, 
It's all kind of messy and hasty. Oh look, here from uh, from the cage I already find one pre pupa that stopped walking around. See, this one is very far in the pupation process. This one is still on the stage where it's looking for a place to pupate. And it seems this one has already made up his mind. I had a few busy days, so I have not been able to check them since yesterday. Which explains why one of them is already pupating. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna have some plastic containers here. But I put you guys here for a second. Right. It's gonna be some messy footage, but I'm I'm not a professional yet. Every year my YouTube channel will turn a little more professional, but the more people watch, the more people help, the better I will become at filming. So, <clears throat> okay, I have to concentrate, it's late, I'm tired, it's a last minute desperate attempt. So these paper tubs here, they will uh, be a substitute pupation chamber. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put one larva inside, close the lid, there we go. Well, I'm gonna take this pre-pupa, which should be turning into a pupa very soon. One sign it really wants to pupa is the fact that the legs are retracted. They have like suction cups on their legs. But they're not sticky anymore and they have retracted into the body why you ask because this helps them with digging underground it's not very easy to dig if you have sticky feet and i hear some noise here i think we have another wanderer here i'm not sure if this is one that wants to pupate or i think this one has just fallen down this one's still feeding i think so here I have a new bottle of fresh food. Here I have some of the old food I want to remove. Oh wait, look at that. There behind the back. Yes, that's another pupator. Let's grab him. Alright, so we have like... I think these can go together because this one here is not moving anymore. So he will be safe if I add this one. There we go. Close the lids. And that's it. What I'm going to do now, you ask, is I'm going to leave these alone for two weeks, undisturbed, nothing else. And then. Um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take some of the caterpillars that are still eating and put them on the new food. It's not much, but it's something at least, huh? So if you're wondering what this is, here we have some nice big Apiphora moths. I still fail to breed them for some reason, but I will complete their life cycle sometime. I'll guarantee this. And some Automeris. They're not the point of this video, but uh, so I'm gonna put this cutie pie on here. Go and feed. Now, if this one also wants to pupate, it will fall off the plant and go back to the bottom of the cage but I think this one generally fell down and it's not a pre pupa but we will see about that so here we have another larva let's take you very gently oh there we go look at the colors of this one it's beautiful so these are the f literally fully grown I guess since, um, well, as I've shown you, they're literally pupating. So this, this is their maximum size. And see some nice colors here on the side. It's 
a nice little hog moth. Oh, it's great. So let's put you on here. Oops, you fell down. Let's put you back, huh? Where you belong. There you go. Well, if you're wondering what's gonna happen next, I'm gonna take these bottles with old food I'm gonna take them out I'm gonna throw away all the contents including some of the droppings of the caterpillars and uh, put that new bottle in here alright friends it has been like two weeks and I haven't looked ever uh, I, haven't, uh, I haven't ever looked back since yeah Sorry for that one. It's time to check up to see how these pre-pupil larvae are doing nowadays. Let's check it out. Aha! There we go. Fresh looking pupa. Looks very healthy. Let's put this one here. Another one. Looks good. Quite healthy. There we go. Ah. Here we have two more. <clears throat> well, this is the final result of my rearing. Um, since I ordered 30 eggs, I would have expected more than just 4 pupa. So, out of these 4 eggs, of, uh, oh, sorry, out of these 30 eggs, we had like 8 caterpillars, and from 8 caterpillars, from 30 eggs we had like 4 pupa um, is, do I consider it to be a failure? the answer is no I'm still happy to have these but I would have been happier with a better result I guess uh, I have to try next time but maybe we can get another generation and looking at these pupa for a second I think yes I think let's check it out Um, I'm not really sure of their, so to speak, gender, but it's hard to see right now. But, hmm, I was hoping to see if they were males and females, but it's kind of hard to see right now in this species. I can usually tell from the abdomen but I think I need a magnifying glass either way um, judging by the size of them there are males and females so that means uh, I gotta check when they hatch but there's a chance that I will be able to breed them however this is a species that like I said it overwinters so I'm going to see the moths from these pupa in like a year or a half a year like four to six months time which is kind of a long time sadly the good news is that <coughs> I will include this overwintering process in the video um, I'm gonna take this pupa I'm gonna put them back in a container 
And um, next we will cut to the clip where we will overwinter them. Okay, let's go. I was wrong. I was completely, completely wrong. I was just about to take my container outside with my Dolbina Tankrai mods in uh, order to overwinter them outside in the cold. And check this out. What did I see in the, in the container? What do I see in the container? Can you believe it? I was about to take these guys outside to overwinter them. Yes, even I make mistakes. I never expected them to hatch right now, so I'm as surprised as you are. But it's finally finished. My first first moth cycles video. And my first Dolby Natankrai. And wow, it's fast. And it needs a place to inflate the wings, honestly. So I'm gonna put them here on this cage. This is a, a sacred moment, people. It's a sacred moment. Yes, there we go. Come on, man. Go and inflate your wings. Everything I thought about them is wrong. I thought they would overwinter until next year. But it seems they're already hatching right now. I'm gonna take this pupa out as fast as I can. And I'm gonna store them in my room. They're, they are not supposed to be in this container. I thought we would see them next year. Like, maybe in spring next year. Ah, it settled down. It stopped moving. It means it's about to inflate the wings right now. Bringing to completion my first Moth Cycles video. We did it. We did it. Yes, let's get some good lighting on here. Oh, yes. Wow. This point, we should not disturb it too much, of course, but uh, we'll see how it turns out. I'm gonna leave this specimen alone for like 30 minutes. And check back if it's a healthy one. Incredible, this is really, really makes me happy. That's the end. That's it everybody. I finally did it. I captured the life cycle of a moth. On camera, from egg to adult, as I promised. And this is the result. Let's take a look. Let's take a closer look. One beautiful specimen of the Dolbina Tankai from the Far East. I hope you like this experience. And there's something that I would like to tell all of you viewers. This is the first video in this series that I've made. And to be honest, I'm going to stop the video right here. Some of you will be curious about the other pupa that still have to hatch. I will show them in regular videos on my YouTube channel. Not in this video. Some of you will be curious how I breed them from now on. I mean, this is just the first specimen. We need males, we need females, we need this and that, we need to feed them and blah blah blah. There's a whole lot of information missing from this video, but to be honest, this video was just a test of what's to come here. And believe me, there's a lot to come. Now, I want all of your feedback about this video and uh, if you liked it or not 
this video format and what you would like to see in the future. I am working behind the scenes on several videos of this type. They are called Moth Cycles. And Moth Cycles is the name of my special video project where I show you the life cycle of a moth species from egg to adult and the way I raise them in captivity and eventually breed them. This is the first moth cycle video I will publish on my YouTube channel. But it's not perfect. I think some mistakes were made. I forgot to film some important moments. Not only that, I should uh, probably include more information about um, how I continue the bloodline, how I reproduce all the adults, how I feed them, how long they live and if they will produce a second generation. And maybe filming all the individuals I have raised and not the first moth that ha has hatched. But for now I am happy because it was just a test. And behind the scenes I am working on a professional video format for mud to make it uh, more viewable. I also regret the way how shaky my videos are. I've been handling the camera while trying to change and clean their containers. And I regret this. I think I need, um, I need to configure my camera in a way that it's basically motionless and not holding it in my hand while I'm changing the caterpillars. Um, I'm uploading this first Moth Cycles video as a test, basically, for all of you to give feedback to and tell me what aspects you liked and what you would like to see improved. Because in the future, I'm going to make a video like this um, on most or all of my species. I think it's more wholesome and more educational because now you can see the whole process behind the scenes including eventual mistakes, mortality, this and that that's important and let's not appreciate this, this beauty of a hawk moth here you've seen its entire life cycle guys you've seen it all all the efforts all the changing of the containers and here the adult and it's to be honest it's a beauty I love it I love this Dobina Tankai. I would marry it, I would date it. I probably wouldn't bear with that, but I leave that to the other moths that are about to hatch. If you're curious about my other pupa and how the life cycle continues, then please like, like and subscribe. And you'll see uh, some, uh, some unrelated videos about the same species, that's the same bloodline. And for now I have to think a lot about how am I going to continue this, how am I going to get better equipment, how am I going to make this more inform, uh, you know, educational, more informational. I should, yeah. There's many factors uh, to consider here. Thanks for watching all of you. It's been, um, actually since, since I got the eggs, I got the eggs on, um, 20, uh, the 23rd of September is the day the eggs hatched of the species. Uh, so, the life cycle of this moth has been incredibly fast. Maybe, maybe less than two months. And it's probably one of the fastest growing hog moths that I have observed in captivity so far. Which is not strange, it's a small species, it's a tiny moth to be honest, it's a small thing. It's a cute thing. It's easy to breed, it feeds Ligustrum, uh, ash tree, things like that. Perfect for a test. I never raised this species before, it's the first time. Let's see his cutie little eyes here. But um... I really want to do this all over again, but more professional. So please tell me what you think and um, like and subscribe because there will be more Moth Cycles videos in the future. Thank you. Oh. Before all of you leave, 
before all of you leave to watch other videos I would like to remind you of one thing I would like to remind all of you of my crowdfunding platform Patreon I know what you're thinking you're probably cringing right now and you're like oh no once again Bart is bringing up the subject of money but I would one thing that I would really like is to make videos like this professional but I'm really inexperienced with editing not only am I inexperienced with editing um, there's a fundamental differences between normal videos and this one you see normally I already breed a lot of species behind the scenes so for me it's convenient to film all the moths that I see in my lifetime and um, I just want to say this video is the first video where the tables have been turned because for this video I've actually ordered the livestock yes I've ordered the eggs of this species in order to capture its life cycle on camera to test my new video project called Moth Cycles that means usually I film them because I breed them already but in this case I breed them so I can film them that means that it's the other way around the tables are turned usually the filming is a byproduct of my hobby but in this case filming of my hobby is a byproduct of filming so I'm not gonna complain about crowdfunding but if you're willing and able to help um, then perhaps perhaps sometime in the future I would I could remake this video and capture the life cycles of not this species but many species on camera like this but with professional equipment with professional editing with less shaky footage better quality images less rambling maybe even a script I don't know man maybe I'm thinking too big I don't know it could be that I'm the problem here maybe I have too big dreams I don't know I think it would be great I think there are literally hundreds of species out there I want to show all of you but for that I need to bring up the painful and dreadful subject of money and crowdfunding and I'm sorry for that I hope you don't consider it um, to be a degradation of the quality of this video but um, <coughs> you know this YouTube channel was just a hobby for me when I started it was just something for myself so I had a so I had a video reference for all my own moths you know I like rewatching the things I did that's why I take a lot of pictures as well uh, it's for myself it's a reference and I never expected it to get well um, over 3000 subscribers but what we're looking at right now is that we are gaining about 200 subscribers a month and it could be that in one or that in two or three years maybe we can even uh, exceed the 10,000 subscriber mark so I'm, I'm currently I'm in limbo I don't know what to do you know um, on one hand this is still just a hobby for me this is still just very amateurish 
it's still just very shaky and unedited and overloaded and this and that and I'm, I'm in doubt I'm like should I throw my life away and uh, should I invest all my resources in YouTube and I'm at the point where I'm like I don't know man I honestly don't know it's not that successful but it's also not unsuccessful I mean it's moderate success but um, I guess I have to thank all of you for watching this was the first Moth Cycles video I hope you enjoyed seeing all the stages um, and I promise you the next video of this episode or of, of this series will be better will have better editing will be a little bit more professional but honestly I have a long way to go this was Dobina Tankrai with Bart Coppens. Thank you for your viewership. Bye bye and until next Moth Cycles video.